Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> okay, cool. Uh, yo, it's Lundo. I'm fucking with a uh, South Island brand. Uh, stay tuned for my, my my new EP coming out, Fractures Two. Yeah. See y'all soon. To another South Island interview, and today we're here with Lundo. Yeah, sure. <laughs> so, uh, gotta get the jitters out, bro. Everybody got them. Sure. All right, so tell the people shit, shit about yourself. Man, I go by Lundo, um, born and raised in Chicago, South Side, and I, I rap, uh, I do photography, I edit videos, all that. Yeah. So, tell us how you got uh, meant to make music. Um, I got into music when I when I first found the music. Actually, I found music late. I was like 15. Everybody else was already, you know, doing whatever they, they was doing. And when I got to Kenwood, actually, when, yeah, you know, we so all that so uh, in like seventh grade, uh, I had just came from private school, so I didn't really know about no, no culture, no nothing. And then when I came out, I mean, when I came into school, um, you know, I just found a bunch of shit. That's when the culture drive, you know. Herb was out, Keith was still, he was really in it, whatever he was doing. And uh, J. Cole had dropped too. And when I found that music, it was so great. I was like, I should just start making this shit. So that's when I started writing. And then I got serious for like sophomore year maybe. And then that's when I started recording with my homies and everything. And yeah. Okay, so. Uh, All right, with uh, like hearing the list of artists that you, uh, that you just listed, yeah. You can kind of hear that in your music, like you can hear like the realness of J. Cole, just the experience of experiences of Herb. So I can most def definitely see where you're coming from, especially yeah. being from Chicago. And just um, how do you feel like the Chicago music scene kind of like influenced you? Like, do you feel like um, you were kind of pressured to be more of like a street rapper, or did you kind of like turn the brakes and wanted to be like more lyrical because of being oversaturated with like street music in Chicago? Um. I wanted to be lyrical, just because that's what that's what I really catered to the most. Mm -hmm. um, Cause I like J Cole more than at the time more than all of those people I listed, and uh, it was a, it's a thing about Chicago. You just gotta be you just gotta be real, and you know people gonna feel it regardless. So it really it really didn't matter to me if I was street or if I did whatever you know if I just rap whatever I I lived and it was real then you know it was gonna be easy regardless. Sure. Okay, so like seeing that like being real is like a big factor for you. Do you feel like putting that factor into making your music? Is there like a certain amount of time like you feel like you need to set aside to make your music because like you don't want to put out nothing that's rushed, like you yeah. just don't feel like organic. Yeah, okay, yeah, because um, I don't know when. For me, my, my writing process or making music process in general, it kind of has to come on naturally. So uh, for me, however much time it takes, it can take a week, a month to make like one song. And um, you know, it's all the better for it because the songs be coming out great, but um, you know, really it's all natural. So really however much time, so yeah. All right. Can you tell us about some of the songs that didn't come out so great? And you know, those times you face yeah. like adversity when making your music. Yeah, it's, I've had a couple songs that I recorded or I've written, and I was just like, this. They don't, they don't sound how I want them to sound in my head, so I just I put them to the side, and whenever I make something new, um, I use whatever ideas that didn't, you know, were not good for that into something else to make it a little bit better, or something, you know, just, I don't know, I try to connect everything, so I use something from something else that, that didn't work for something better. Yeah, I'm glad you said that because I feel like when a lot of people make music or they're being a creative, once something just doesn't work, they kind of like throw it off to the side and never look back to it. Yeah. And it's important to look back at your old work because you never know. Some of your old work might be influential to what you need today. Yeah, exactly. It can be a line of a word that inspires a whole new idea that turns the gear on again. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. For sure. And it's even better for music because just uh, just because lyrics didn't work on this beat, yeah. you can find a whole nother beat, yeah, a whole exactly. nother meaning yeah. to the lyrics too, so for sure, most definitely. Uh -huh. So, 
like also speaking on like your song making process yeah. like it seems like you kind of like are very free flowing yeah. with like your ideas yeah. so like do you also kind of apply that free flowing nature to like when it comes to finalizing your songs or are you more of a perfectionist on that end i'm more of a perfectionist i try to plan everything out and if it doesn't go to plan then i just put it in god's hands and you know, whenever it comes out but i usually like to have a strategy with how i finish songs or what they're going what what kind of project they're going to be on or when i put them out but the making of it is uh, i try to be natural mm -hmm. so like speaking on like okay so perfectionist but also natural at the same time yeah. like you don't want to overwork something to the point to where it's like almost forced yeah when it sounds robotic or mm -hmm. like that gotcha. so tell us more about then like your earlier days like first coming out did you have like that same mindset with the music that you first started making and putting uh, out i had the mindset of how to make it but of uh of where it was gonna what it was gonna happen to it or with it i had a whole different mindset with it um, you know when you make something and you really like your work, you're like, oh yeah, this this shit great. I'm gonna, I'm gonna blow off this, and that did not happen. Um, I remember I made my second song called Feta, and I was like, yeah, we we gonna we gonna learn to eliminate with this, whatever, whatever. And people actually did not end up liking that song, and I and it did like, I don't know, it just did worse than my, my first song that I ever put out, and I don't know, it just. It just made me think and it made me like change my whole mindset on how to really structure all this stuff. Yeah. What was the mindset like not to drop your first song? Um or like just tell us like more about your first song, like your first song compared to your second song. Yeah. Uh first song, Watch and Learn, it was for me it was kinda of monumental because before that I don't think anyone really heard me rap before, even know what I can do with this rapping and it was a really good song to me too. Like and the other people so for people actually liking you know what I like because the lyrics in there it weren't weird but I know my writing style is unorthodox and you know it's not it's new so I was really just glad people really liked it uh, a lot of people gravitated towards it I didn't know that many people was so I was just I was just excited at that time yeah and tell us more about like how seeing the like relative success of your first song yeah. and then kind of seeing how like nobody was really fucking with your second one like how did that kind of affect you wanting to make music like going forward um uh, that's when the the natural state kicked in because i kind of just learned to just, just let go of all expectations of whatever and just you know let whatever art comes just be um so that's really that's really what changed after that second song and i kind of just uh you know, whenever I made music, I didn't really think who was gonna like it. I just thought, you know, this is art, so you know, whatever happens to it, just happens. Okay. So, and for the people listening, how many projects do you have out right now? Uh, I got like two. I have one. I have one mixtape called "The Grim Adventures of My Mind," and I have an EP called "Fractions." And I think I have. Yeah, I have to be. I I have to think. So it's like the next stage of album. Like, are you just trying to build like a fan base right now? Um, kind of both. So right now, I'm a uh, I'm working on Fractions too. Mm -hmm. Um, but at the same time, I'm working on uh, album or project. I don't know. I don't really know what to call it. I know it's a project though. But um, just working on more music in general and just trying to you know focus on my craft and build up. Mm -hmm. All right. So. Seeing that you have like more work obviously coming mm -hmm. out in the future because I, I hope you don't plan to stop anytime soon. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So uh, and I just want to go through like like the time where you made like each of your projects. So yeah. the Grim Adventures on my mind for me personally, yeah. I can't. Lie, I remember when you dropped that. Yeah. Seeing you in the hallway, I was like, damn, that's that raw ass nigga. Right? <laughs> that yeah. Shit. Everybody had like the everybody had the stickers. Shit. That was bro. crazy. Like yeah, a lot of no. people don't pay attention to a rollout. And your yeah. rollout was genius, bro. And like the, the yeah, comic cool video, videos was funny, bro. I'm seeing your videos around uh, Kenwood just walking around, and then the stickers was wild, bro. Yeah, nah, I be thinking back like, damn, that was really, that was really good on my part, the marketing, yeah. Yeah, so. And I feel like that also goes to show like your creativeness in other areas besides yeah. just the music. So speak more to that. Um, thank you. Yeah, really, uh, I try to do everything else. That influenced music as well. Like I said, I also take pictures. I don't do it as good as Darius, I don't think, um, or as much as him. But I also take photos. I edit photos. All the videos you've probably ever seen of me, 
I edited it, but I mean my music videos, I mean. Um, I make collages too, but I don't really think anyone has seen that. Um, so yeah, in those areas, uh, that's, that's a whole different type of creativity. So, you know, whenever I do that, I also try to use it whatever I can for, for music. But, um, yeah, when I do those rollouts, or those videos, um, I try to show people that I can do more than just, just write or, you know, make music. Yeah, I like how you explained how these influence the music. Like, when people see pictures, when people see visuals to go along with music, yeah. it sometimes makes the song better. Yeah. There's been a lot of times where I hear a song and I'm I'm messing with it, but I'm not yeah. really messing with it. Yeah, and I get a music video come, video, like, and you like, damn, this song is hard. So like, it's actually smart that you tapped into like just different uh, angles because a lot of artists become stagnant because they don't know how to do stuff on their own. Yeah. They're looking for a team, and if you don't have a buzz, you're not gonna get that team. Yeah, exactly. So I feel you on that. Yeah, I really did all that because I was broke though. Cause yeah. I, I can't, I don't want to pay no one to, to edit the music video. Like, I don't know how much that costs because I be doing it myself so much, but yeah, no, nah, every, everything I did, I was cause I was, I was broke shit. Mm -hmm. For sure. And so like what me and Darius, you know, after obviously going to Kenwood with you, you know, seeing yeah. something like a little bit of the behind the scenes, like we saw like the crew that you was hanging with, like, yeah. you know, just speak to some like your collaborators and things like that. Um, I, I work with, damn, I don't know. Hope people know their names. Um, I work with Abnormal, who is a producer. His name is Miles, if y'all don't know. Um, I work with Flair, or that, that's also the rap name, Flair, K1. Um, I work with I work with Jake, who is, um, if y'all also see my videos, when it says directed by Jake, that's who it is. Um, he's a director, he's also a really talented writer. Um, I work with my homie Tyler, he's also a producer. And, um, you know, uh, they're a really good team to have. Uh, it really, it really, <laughs> we be really saving money, but uh, they're producers, rappers, and working with them is like, I don't know, those are people who really inspire me in life. Like, I listen, I listen to other people, I mean, my uh, other peers, but those, my friends really inspire me because they, yeah. they're on the same level I am, or at least I, I see them as they are. So, you know, we really inspire each other, we help each other, we, I don't know, we build. I always feel like, you know, having my own team around me and shit. Yeah. It's like, you kind of feel like y'all, like, when y'all at that same level, it's like y'all all grow together. Exactly, yeah. And it's mm -hmm. nice seeing the progress and shit. Yeah, it's cool seeing y'all, like, literally what y'all was doing for Beats and Bars, bro. Y'all yeah. gotta realize, like, that whole Beats and Bars era was, like, a huge thing for y'all, because what y'all did was, was something that a lot of people can't do, is get, like, a local audience. Y'all got yeah. Kenwood, like, y'all wrapped around Kenwood. And once y'all got that, like, you get opportunities to just like, you walking around and people know, knowing you, like, literally at a party, it was a June, June 19th, uh, Juneteenth, yeah. I saw y'all at the party. And I'm like, yo, this your group, you is with them. Like, you yeah. you can recognize a person just off of the group that they had. So it's kind of cool how y'all y'all stick together and y'all all working and y'all keeping it in house. Yeah. It makes everything easy. Yeah, luckily we're all really good friends too. And we're not just workmates mm -hmm. and coworkers, whatever you call it. <laughs> Yeah, we're all really good friends and we damn near, we didn't grow up together, but we spent a, a significant uh, amount of years together to know each other well, and it's way past the music. It's like, you know, it's some life shit, really. Yeah. So, speaking on, like, just life, you know, going through your experiences and things like that, and tell us about the time of your life and where you recorded, or when you were in the process of making the Grammy Adventures of my mom. Uh, that was... Yeah, that was the only last time we were, I'm trying to remember that. I was like, I was, it may have been like, it was a junior year, and I remember the, the album that I'm working on now was supposed to be Grim Adventures, or supposed to be my first mixtape, and then uh, my friend Filet told me, he was like, nah, you need to, because I told him the uh, the idea or the concept of the album, and he was like, yeah, no, nah, you need something to go in between the album, it's a little bit too too big, so that's when I started working on Grim Adventures. Um, I don't know. I don't really. I never really had a concept for it, cause uh, uh, I was just a bunch of songs strung together. So working on that was really whatever beats I could find. I started rapping on them. Whatever good songs I made from that, I was like, okay, this this should go on there. Um, and I think that summer of twenty twenty nineteen is when the whole summer I was just working on. You know, every day I was working on a new song or a new verse for you know whatever else. And, me and my team was just working. It's really hard just trying to push that out. 
Okay. So, um, also, take us through, like, your mindset when he was making fractions and why you want to, you know, why there's a second installment. Um, fractions was, uh, I just had a couple of songs that I didn't want to release as singles. I don't really like releasing singles like that because I don't really know how to build that up. That's probably, you know, that's uh, maybe a fault on my part or whatever, but I don't really know how to build certain songs up. So I was like, I will just put it all together. And it was about my birthday too, so I can be like, this is a little gift to me mm-hmm. knowing knowing that I did that, because I recorded it in like maybe two weeks. I put it all together in like two weeks. Um, so it was just a little birthday gift to myself um, and for the people, because I, I don't know, I don't really put out stuff like that. So I want them to make sure I still, you know, I still got it and, you know, it was something new too, because the quality of it was way better than Grim Adventures. So uh, yeah, I want, them to know, I want them to people know that I was growing. For sure, uh, when talking about growing, um, that's also like reaching out to other people and yeah. just um, collaborate. So um, with with that, who do you see yourself with, uh, collaborating with local, and like who do you see yourself collaborating with um, on like a global scale in the global, future? Global, um, uh, I don't know. I never hear a lot of people in the game that I'd be like, damn, bro, I should really work with them. Mm-hmm. Um, actually, I do want to work with this this nigga named Highway. If any, if you guys know him, mm-hmm. um, named Highway, he made great music it's not lyrical at all but that shit is amazing but locally i got i got one song with tonight already mm-hmm. um shout out tonight um i do want to work with kai and that that whole team really uh yeah. tonight kai alex his name alex right yeah, i never minutes, really yeah, 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 I, I've been calling yeah. him minutes but yeah. i want to see alex for the whole the camera um yeah really just that whole team and uh yeah right now aside from my group that's that's the, the group i wouldn't work with i, I definitely want to do more songs tonight she's really cool yeah. Um, I haven't met, have I met Kai? Nah, I ain't met Kai yet. But yeah, just that. Yeah, that's crazy. Like, I feel like every every interview we do, somehow, like, their names are brought up. Because, yeah. like, like, you got to realize, like, Chicago culture is changing and they're starting yeah. to realize who's on the scene. So, like, mm-hmm. with Sanat, um, Kai, and Menace, with them being brought up, it's just crazy. Because, like, we all, it just proves that we all got, like, eyes on them. Exactly. And we yeah. all watching. So, most definitely, that's that would be a hit, bro. I'm already knowing. Bro, now I also just show that we we all come from the same place. You yeah, know, yeah, yeah. We went to school one day, like, you feel me? That could be us too, one day. Yeah. All right, uh, seeing that we all came from the same high school, that being Kenwood, um, how do you feel like Kenwood, um, what did you feel like Kenwood did to like your career and just you as a person? Um, the teachers really helped. Um, I hate school, um, but the, the teachers there, they really helped. I don't know if anyone can see this, but, uh, you know, Teachers like Sparagus, who really helped us make beats and bars, she um, sponsored it so we can even have it. Um, and you know, the teachers in the, a- the teachers in the AC really helped because they help. I don't know, just prepare you for uh, you know your teenage years rather than just. I don't know. I feel like some teachers, when you're really when you get to high school, some teachers just don't care. They treat it like a you know, like a uh, routine class, but the teachers in the AC, seventh, eighth grade, they really helped you become, you know, whatever person you are. And um, yeah, so the teachers and some pe- and the people there and the staff, they really helped more than anything. For sure, uh, seeing that like the AC teachers kind of helped you become who you are and just like navigate a uh, teenage life. Do you feel as if your your teenage life and your career would be like totally different if you didn't go to Kenwood? Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, if I went anywhere else, I'd probably be somewhere wishing I went to Kenwood because I don't know. We was just it was really just popping. So I feel like everyone that didn't go saw us and was like, "Damn, bro, I really I want really to be like to to go there and see what it, see what they doing." For sure, and I feel like it's funny because the way we talk about Kenwood is the way we also talk about Chicago. I feel yeah, like yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's one of those things where if we're from anywhere else, we'd be like, "Damn, what the fuck would I be doing right now?" Yeah, so exactly. Yeah, I keep that same energy most definitely. You know, I definitely held a lot of culture there. Um, I, well, I don't really know anywhere else because I ain't going anywhere else, but I really did feel like Kimwood had maybe all of Chicago culture at one point at least. Yeah, for sure. For sure. The Grim Adventures. 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 The Grim Adventures.